created using Powtoon.
sense of direction And I'm needing some strength and protection Walking away with you I go walking away with you And when, I, when I'm faced with a tricky temptation I abandon the whole situation Walking away with you I go walking away with you Oh, what a fair, safe plan Just walking hand in hand I didn't have you to turn everything to, then where would I turn? I've never been more than a single breath away. I have never felt so much security knowing you're with me, and I'm so glad that you find. I'm happy sad since you tore it all away and I'm so glad though it hurts to know I'm leaving everything I ever thought that I would be once I held it in my hand it was a kingdom made of sand and you blew it all away I can't believe that I'm glad Take my life A living sacrifice Knowing it's the least that I can do Make my life A living sacrifice i 
Hello folks, my name is Ralph Friedrichs. I just want to share my story uh, with um, my situation back in 1981 in the United States Marine Corps. I was sitting in a chapel during boot camp and a uh, chaplain tapped me on the shoulder and asked me to come into his quiet room. As I was walking into his quiet room, I had no idea what he wanted from me. It was then that uh, God was setting my life in motion. Uh, so the chaplain sat me down and he says, Ralph, I've noticed that you like to help people, you motivate people, you're always walking around with a smile. And I wanted to know, this is the chaplain saying this to me, I wanted to know, Ralph, would you like to uh, volunteer and become a lay leader? And of course, I had no idea what a lay leader was. Uh, so he explained to me what a lay leader was. It's somebody that is a liaison between the recruits and the chaplain. So when the recruits have issues, problems, or anything uh, like that, they go to the lay leader and, uh, I mean, excuse me, they go to the chaplain as the lay leader uh, to, to uh, let the chaplain know of the situations that are happening. It was then, in 1981, that God already had a plan for me, and, and what went there from, from that point on was that God realized that no matter how long it would take for me to achieve what God already knew what was going to happen to me, He would let me go down into the worst extremes in life. So from 1981, as a lay leader, and I'm going to show you the medal now with a lay leader, the front and the back. This is the back of the metal, and then the front looks like this. So in 1981, at Paris Island, South Carolina, when I became a lay leader, God already had my life set in motion. But again, he wanted me to set my own course in life. So I went down the years and the course of my life and, and uh, did some of the worst things possible to my own body uh, through alcoholism. God already said to himself, well, I'm going to wait for Ralph to uh, get close to hitting rock bottom. So from 1981 until 2011, which is 30 years, God came to me again and he said, Ralph, are you ready to continue helping other people? That's when I um, formed Mastic Beach Outreach 2011. And what that was is for uh, older people and uh, mentally and physically challenged people that my wife and I would help them by giving them clothing, food, uh, possibly like in one case tires for someone's car and um, so God said okay he is getting better uh, but he's still not ready to do what I really wanted him to do so in 19 excuse me in 2011 I continued my alcoholism uh, to the point of 10 to 15 shots a day as time went further, two, two years down the road, it became worse and worse with my alcoholism. In 2013, God finally put his big hand on my head and says, are you ready now? That is when I hit rock bottom, June 22nd, 2013. I reached out and I finally admit that I had an alcohol problem. It was then when God lifted me up and, and set my life in motion for today, September 2nd, 2014. So from 2013 until 2014, I continue educating myself and you, others, through my websites, through my, uh, my uh, videos on how to battle with addiction. And God saw this and he said, he, he said to himself, Ralph is still continuing helping people. So in between 2013 and 2014, as, as time was going by and, and I proved to God that I was really reforming myself uh, that God uh, introduced me to uh, Dr. Luis Gonzalez. I had been toying with the idea of becoming a substance abuse counselor until I ran into uh, an article about recovery coaching. So I thought it was very ironic that God had planted Dr. Luis Gonzalez from starting point, that S-T-A-R-T-I-N-G-P-O-I-N-T-M-N.com, 844-414-844, into my life. Dr. Luis Gonzalez gave me the educational uh, programming to turn me into a recovery coach. So between while I was training for Dr. Luis Gonzalez to become a recovery coach and today my father comes from South Carolina to visit and we're looking at my shrine which my wife calls a shrine which is all my Marine Corps ribbons and medals and my father asked me, Ralph, what is this medal for? What is, what is this particular medal for? 
and I then said to myself, here's where it all came together. I finally realized what that medal stood for and how it influenced me in my life. It was back in 1981 that God knew already that I would eventually, towards the middle uh, or 60% uh, of my life, be out to help other people, to continuously help people, to motivate people, to coach people. So it was from 1981 to 2011 that I ran my life to the ragged ends, to the pit of the worst. And then from 2011 to 2013, even worse than that. And then June 22nd, 2013, finally helped myself up with the grace of God. And in 2014, became an addiction recovery coach. And all that epiphany came to me due to my father asked me what this stood for. This particular silver medal. When he asked me that, it all finally came together, that God had bigger and better plans for me. And this is what I'm telling you folks, there is a plan for you. No matter what the plan might be, you don't know what it is, but there is a plan for you. It's just a matter of you figuring it out. So why don't you let me help take your life back? Thank you. God bless you and have a sober day. Good morning and welcome to Take Your Life Back. Today is September 4th. It's about 3.30 in the morning. I just want to share with everyone something this morning. Uh, I saw a demonstration uh, maybe about a month ago in reference to our dark side and the power of prayer. If you continuously pray over and over and over again, things will eventually become clear. Although that a lot of times when we pray to God, we don't get answers right away. Uh, but if you continuously pray, over and over things become clear so the demonstration involves this bottle and if you see the inside of this bottle is all dark liquid that represents our dark side and this cap represents our limitations so we as a human which is the bottle have limitations which is this cap so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this bottle into the sink and we're going to do a demonstration so let me put that there i'm going to turn the camera around so that everybody can see it. And hopefully you folks can all see it now. Okay, so you see the bottle. I'm gonna turn the water on. Okay, so now everything inside is dark, which represents our body and our inside. And what I'm gonna do, and this clear water represents our prayer. So you see the continuous water running. I'm going to now, as the prayer, uh, as we're praying, I'm going to lift our limitations, which is the cap. And we're going to slowly add our prayer to this. We all go through dark times. I mean, I've had some dark years. I just didn't understand everything that was happening. I'm going to admit it that I'm not a super patient person. I tend to want answers right away and know what's happening and when I, uh, what I can do to solve it. I don't like not being happy and confident about things. It's just not who I am. But when I get down, it takes a lot for me to get back up. If we pray for a sign, which is this, the water is prayer, but just give up because we feel like God's already heard our prayer and he knows what we need, but he hasn't answered. It's kind of like when we were kids in a toy store and we kept asking our mom and dad for toys, but we never got any results. Yeah, it never worked for me either, but you get what I mean. Anyway, that is exactly what's happened to me in the past years. I have prayed and prayed and prayed, but haven't really gotten any results. The answer I thought God would give me, uh, and especially in the time of, of praying, I thought my problems would be fixed, which was all before 2013. Then, in 2013, my cap of limitations was lifted. This is the cap, remember this now. was lifted off the bottle, which is my body. Here is where I will just show you how that worked for me. So basically we all have dark sides, which is what's in the bottle, was in the bottle. We are facing and we take the limitations off our mind, which was the cap I lifted. Don't limit what he can do because we have to just trust in the Lord. That sometimes even after we pray and we just give up and it is often why we get defeated. However, even though nothing has really changed, we just keep praying. That's the prayer, the sign of the prayer, the flowing Lord. Just keep praying and never ever give up praying. And if we do that and devote ourselves completely to the Lord, He will pull us through. The dark times will go away and we just have to be patient. I know it's hard. Being patient truly is a virtue. But by never ever giving up on prayer, it's going to show you that 
God will eventually answer all your prayer. And the more we pray, which is this water going into the bottle, one day everything will become clear. You see how clear this is now? That is the power of prayer. Folks, I think that demonstration says it all. If we had a bottle which represents our body and the bottle, uh, everything was dark on the inside. And the water coming out of the faucet represents the prayer day after day after day. Just keeps adding to the darkness which was in the bottle. Eventually all that prayer has to turn what was dark inside this bottle which is our body has to change and become as clear as this water in here. That, folks, is the power of prayer. Good morning and welcome to Take Your Life Back Today show with Ralph Friedrichs. Today we are going to talk about the five ways to start rebuilding your life after addiction. Although, yes, technically we all still have our addiction if we are an alcoholic or a substance abuser, however you've learned to live with it. These are five ways to rebuild after your addiction. But first, as always, we give a shout out to Dr. Luis Gonzalez from startingpointmn.com. Dr. Gonzalez, you can reach him at 844-414-8444, that's www.startingpointmn.com. He will take you from your addiction to your recovery, hand in hand, step by step, one day at a time. He will never ever talk about your past because him and I and thousands of other recovery coaches know that talking about your past is not going to benefit you in the future. What it will do is possibly uh, bring up some old things that might uh, trigger or stress, uh, perform a stressor on you, which could cause a relapse. So we talk about today, 24 hours at a time, and worry about today. Only think about tomorrow and move forward. You can reach him at 844-414-8444. You can also uh, go to him and talk to him about becoming an addiction recovery coach. If you have passion, professionalism, and a personality, and you have an addiction background, whether it's your own or maybe helping others, contact Dr. Luis Gonzalez at startingpointmn.com at 844-414-8444. Let him help you take your life back. Global eyeglasses, they are focused on saving you money, and money they will save you. Like so many of you have called me now, watching this commercial about our eyeglasses that start as low as $6 and go up as much as $69. But here's what people are amazed by when they call me or they uh, email me. They are amazed by what this price that I just quoted you includes. So if, let's say you pick out a frame that's marked $29. It includes a case. It includes a cloth. It includes standard, non-coated, clear, regular prescription single vision plastic lenses. That's included in that price. So when you folks do get in touch with me all the time, you'll say, Ralph, how do you guys do that at GlobalEyeglasses.com? And I tell you exactly. It's because we are focused on saving you money. Like so many of you have done, when you do call me, you also say, what about progressives? I tell you, we have them. What about rimless um, um, glasses, which are all no frame at all? We have them. We have transitions. We have photochromatics. We have polarized. We can make your thicker lenses thinner. We can give you shatterproof lenses. We can give you night driving glasses, which is called anti-reflecting coating. That is all available at globaleyeglasses.com. So you need to go there. And if you have any questions, get a hold of me at 631-599-0218 if you want to text me there. Or like so many of you have done, you've called me at 844-405-HELP on my hotline. I am a board certified optician with over 30 years experience. I can help place your order like I've done so many times. It makes it easier for you. Not, not only do you have a place to save money online for your eyeglasses, but you have your personal optician to, to help you. Call us at 844-405-HELP. Uh, Text me at 631-599-0218. Go to www.globaleyeglasses.com where they are focused on saving you money. Folks, go to my website. My first one is about this show, Take Your Life Back Today show. Uh, on that show, on that website, you'll find all the latest episodes, you'll find my bio, you'll find uh, all the comments from all of you folks from all over the world now. 
you'll find so much to learn on my particular websites, especially www.clearviews.info. The info stands for all the information where you'll get information on, on uh, addiction, on recovery, on alcohol, on substance abuse, on drugs. All that information is available to you free of charge at www.clearviews.info. And if you want to hire me as your addiction recovery coach, go to www.clearreform.com. That's clearreform.com. Folks, have you noticed a pattern? Both my last two websites starts with the word clear. Clear stands for Community Lessons and Power Addiction Recovery. It is you as my audience and me as your host, us as a community that empower addiction recovery. We will work together, we will battle, and we will beat our addiction together, hand in hand. Go to my website, www.takeyourlifebacktodayshow, www.clearviews.info, and www.clearreform.com. I'll be waiting for you. Five ways to rebuild after addiction. One can only feel that things are such now that it's much too late to do anything about it once uh, once the past has gone by and there's not much you can do but from all the times and all the years during your addiction that you might have possibly kind of ruined your relationship. Uh, you, you might feel that it's so messed up that there is no future involved. However, I'm here to tell you differently. There is a huge point on the road that everybody faces I call it the fork in the road. If you make the right choice now and choose the right point, things, these five things, if you utilize them, will follow hopefully to help you with your relationships, uh, hopefully to rebuild your life after addiction. Use below my below five, use the five tips below in your journey and things will become easier. Tip number one I want to give to you is take good care of yourself. Maintain your health with a great diet, good amount of exercise, and plenty of sleep. Make sure you also get plenty of water, and people always, and I mean always, say to me, well, why the water? Folks, it's to flush the system. It's to get all that uh, toxin stuff out of your system. As far as the diet, it's good to do that because it replenishes all the things that you've been missing due to your addiction, all the vitamins that you need. So you need to make sure that you have a good diet and as far as the exercise because you really want to uh, build your your self-esteem, build your health back up. So it's important to take good care of yourself. Uh, number two would be to help your family. It is very likely that your family stood by your side, by your side during all past issues. During your addiction, I'm sure your family stood there. They helped you. They extended a, a helping arm constantly. You have been um, given another chance by them, and uh, you've reached that point in the road, and they're saying, okay, now, here is your new life. We are still standing by you. We stood by you through thick and thin, and we're still here. Help your family as often as you can. Not just your immediate family, but your extended family. All these people that stood by you, day after day, week after week, year after year, while you were addicted to, whether it's alcohol or to uh, any drugs, they are still here, they are still standing by your side, so turn around and help them now. Number three on my list is to be productive. Production is the basis of morale. Find a passion, whether it's sports, blogs, writing, or other things, and stick with it. You need to keep active. Folks, my life has been so active since sobriety has uh, come into my life, which is a couple of years ago. I am busy from morning all the way till nighttime, basically not only with my job, but also with my passion, which is to provide you, my audience, each and every day of video, each and every day with new information, like five ways to rebuild after addiction, like the other day on how to beat cocaine, uh, I mean uh, marijuana, and how to live drug and alcohol free. These are just some topics. We are now approaching 390 episodes, 390 videos that are all published on YouTube on my channel. Either go to Ralph Friedrichs or go to Take Your Life Back Today show with Ralph Friedrichs on YouTube and you will see all these videos, not 
any of these videos are a waste of time, whether even on a Thursday or on a Sunday. These are videos of inspiration, of hope, to give you hope for a better tomorrow. Number four on my list is to be honest and trustworthy. You're the only, you're as good as your word. You only are as good as your word. Think about that. So if you promise somebody you will do some, follow through. If you are going to do something and you don't follow through, your word is not trustworthy. If you give your word, keep it. Be honest. Don't lie. Move forward. Let me tell you something. When you are sober, people will expect, uh, uh, accept you so much better when you tell the truth, and it might be shocking the truth, than to lie again. Because when you start crumbling away at the foundation that you're rebuilding in life, that is not good. So be honest and trustworthy. And number five on my list is to follow the golden rule. Do unto others as you would want done unto you. Simple rule to follow and it's, it's, it's uh, equivalent to what I talk about karma which is a big circle of event that just keeps going. What goes around comes around. What goes around comes around. What comes around goes around. That is exactly what the golden rule is. Do unto others as you would have done unto you. If you don't want to be lied to, don't lie. If you don't want to be cheated, don't cheat. If you don't want to be beat up, don't beat up other people. Simple golden rule to follow. And are you sober today, I promise you, will give you a better tomorrow. There is no doubt in my mind because when you set that foundation, today being sober, tomorrow automatically will follow with sobriety unless you start cheating yourself and lying to yourself that you, again, are using drugs and alcohol. When you start thinking positive, positive results will happen. And you got to remember that big changes in life all start with very small steps. Look for the light at the end of the tunnel, walk towards it, and you will find changes are coming your way. Folks, it is so important these five ways to rebuild after addiction that I'm going to repeat them one more time. Number one is you have to take very good care of yourself. You have to make sure you get the exercise. You have to make sure you get a good diet. You need to make sure you get plenty of sleep because all those years doing drugs and alcohol, even though you were sleeping, it wasn't good sleep. And you got to make sure you get plenty of water to flush your system out. The sleep is to re-energize. It's almost like taking a battery and putting it on your, um, on your power pack to get re-energized. And you have to make sure that exercise and a good diet all fall into place. Number two is to help your family. Your family stood by you day after day, year after year during your addiction, although they weren't happy and although they probably at times were going to kick you to the curb, they didn't. They stood by you, they extended an arm when needed, they extended money when needed, and here you are now at the point where you're at the fork of the road. Make sure you go and continue the right road and make sure that you are there for your family, not just your immediate family, for your extended family. Help them whenever you can. Number three is you have to stay productive. Folks, it is so important, and this is why I have issues with AA somewhat. AA is a very effective organization, but my problem with AA is the fact that they give you about an hour, hour and a half of uh, great, um, some sort of support uh, uh, mechanism there. The issue I have is that I believe truly in my heart that you need to live, breathe, and eat addiction recovery. In other words, from morning till night, like I do, I start first thing in the morning, and I go all the way at night. I start the day with getting ready for my show. I do my show. I continue with editing my show. I continue with getting my next show prepared for tomorrow. I continue with producing my show. I continue then publishing my show. This will sometimes start at 7 in the morning and then end about 9 o'clock at night. That's how long it takes because I have to put credits, I have to put commercials, I have to attach this video to that video to complete a hour video. A lot 
to do, but here is the point. My point is, is that each and everything that I do, whether it's on my videos, whether it's on my uh, interviews over the phone, whether it's walking the streets interviewing people, whether it's even going and, and working on my websites, each and everything I do is related, directly related to addiction, directly related to alcoholism and drug addiction, directly related to me. And it is my job to directly relate all this to you so you can see that I, Ralph, am a real person with a real problem. But as I sit here, as a real person with a real problem, I am telling you, you can live with your problem. You can rebuild after your addiction. Number uh, four is to be uh, honest and trustworthy. You have to be honest with yourself. That's the four, the, 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 the one thing that needs to be done is you have to be honest with yourself. That is number one, four most important in your life. Because if you can't be honest with yourself, how in the world can you be honest with other people? How can you truly look in the mirror knowing that you're lying to yourself and then expect to tell the truth to others? Be honest with yourself. Admit you have a problem. Because if you're drinking two to three drinks a day, you're smoking pot every day, you're doing crack of cocaine, you have a problem. Be honest about it. Be honest with yourself. Be trustworthy. Know that your family doesn't mind inviting you over now because in the older days, every time you came over to a family function, things were missing because you had to feed your addiction. You had to maybe take some jewelry or some chinaware or whatever. Run to the pawn shop to get the money to feed your addiction. Be trustworthy. And show them that there is a new you. Show them that you are not lying to them anymore. Show them with your actions because you know what? Actions speak louder than any words. For example, politicians have thousands of words, thousands of promises that they speak, and then the minute you see their actions after you elected them, that is the true politician. Not to say all politicians do this. There are many politicians that what they spoke and what they do are identical. But there are more, the majority of politicians will speak one thing and do another. Well, that is exactly related to our situation. We, as a people with addictions, whether it's drugs and alcohol, cannot speak out of one side of our mouth and do the other way. That's why I always say, it is great when you hear someone saying, I have a problem. It is great when they say, I'm going to change. And you proceed with caution and listening to that because when they perform, when they act on it, that is the true test. So remember, actions are louder than words. Show your family that you can be trustworthy. Show your loved ones that you are honest. Be honest with yourself. And then follow the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have do unto you. If you don't want to be cheated, don't cheat. If you don't want to be lied to, don't lie to. If you don't want to anything negative in life, do only positive in life. That is a basic golden rule is to do unto others as you would do unto, uh, as others would do unto you, or you would do unto you. <laughs> the way you want to be treated is the way you have to treat other people. That's a pretty simple solution. So remember, take good care of yourself, help your family, be productive, be honest and trustworthy, and follow the golden rule. And always remember that when you have a sober today, when you're sitting here watching my video right now, and you're having a sober day, that will trickle down like a domino effect into tomorrow, and tomorrow will be a better day than any other day that you've had as long as today is sober. If you start thinking positive, I guarantee you positive things will happen in your life. And you have to remember that big changes all start with small steps. They all do. Every tunnel has a light at the end of the tunnel, folks. Look for that light. It might be as small as a pinhole, but when you see it, walk towards it. Because eventually, every small step towards that end of the light, uh, end of the tunnel, will get you closer to that light. And that pinhole light becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and suddenly you're standing in that light and that 
is the big change in your life. If you're ready to make those changes, today is the day to do it. Two things. Number one is, hopefully now you say, I have a problem. The denial of a problem is the worst thing. It goes back to what I just spoke about. Do not lie to yourself because you know you have a problem. You're trying to convince yourself you don't. You're trying to convince yourself you have it in check. You don't. If you're doing two to three drinks a day, if you're doing pot every day, if you're doing crack and coke or any drug every day, you have a problem. You need help. You need to stop denying it. When you stop denying it, reach up to your higher power. In my case, it's God. Ask for guidance. Ask for a direction. Remember, this example that I speak about in every video is that your body and your mind are equivalent to the captain and the ship. Your body is the ship, your mind is the captain. Your mind is trying to control your, your body, which is the ship, through a rough sea, but it's going in circles. And it's rocking all over the place from those big waves. What are you missing? You are missing a important ingredient in a good ship, and that's called navigation. You need direction. You need guidance. Your ship is out of control. Those waves are ready to knock your ship over. Reach up to God. Ask God to be your personal navigator. Then that ship will cruise through the ocean, smooth sailing. You, your body is the ship. You, your mind is the captain. And God is your navigator. Together, all three will come together and you will go through life smooth sailing. Yes, even people with God as their navigator, run into obstacles. They run into bad storms. But the thing is, is the power of prayer is so strong that any problem you face, you will come out of it okay. It might be rocky, it might be hard, but you'll come out of it okay. But continue to pay, uh, pray to God and ask Him to navigate you through each and every problem. Once you have done those two things, the next, next thing would be to find a support group. Again, I spoke about AA. I am never, ever going to knock AA. What I am telling you is that I needed to roll up my sleeves and get more involved. I couldn't just do an hour, hour and a half class every day. I needed to be more involved, and my involvement started with websites, continued with more web websites, continued with interviews on streets, continued with radio, uh, excuse me, telephone interviews, into the camera, into your home. No matter where you are, living room, kitchen, jail, homeless shelter, nursing home, and watching me, I am here with you to tell you that there is hope for today. There is hope for tomorrow. But you need to find a, a support group. Go to AA, go to rehab, go to treatment centers, utilize my methods, call me at 844-405-HELP. All together, us as a community, our lessons will empower addiction recovery. We can live with any addiction as long as we live, learn to live how with that addiction. We need to learn how to live with the addiction. What makes living with addiction so uh, workable is mind over matter and a support group. The minute you know that any time you take alcohol and put it into your system, it's like swallowing Drano. The minute you realize anytime you smoke a joint, it's like putting your face over the pipe, the tailpipe of a car and inhaling the, the fumes coming out of your exhaust. The minute you realize that when you do crack, cocaine, uh, heroin, you might as well just go to your medicine cabinet or go right under your sink base uh, in the kitchen and inject any one of those chemicals because all of them, including what I just told you about, crack, cocaine, heroin, they all will kill you. When you put the, ex uh, the equivalent of any drug and alcohol to the equivalent of a skull, of a, which marks death, which marks poison, that is when you have finally had mind over matter. When you look at alcohol and drugs as poison, as there is no way in the world you would put that into your system, that is when you know that you cannot utilize any of them because it will kill you. And if you don't know that, and if you continuously use alcohol and drugs, you'll either kill yourselves 
like millions of people do on overdoses, or you'll be um, unfortunate enough, because you have to live with this, to get behind a wheel and kill other people. You'll have to live with that. Just think about this. There are people that drank and went behind a wheel and killed innocent people. Not only do they spend quite some time in jail for this, for possibly involuntary manslaughter, DWI, fifth degree, sixth or whatever, but they have to live with the fact that they took somebody else's life. If this video doesn't show you the passion that I am showing to you, that it's not worth it. If put any alcohol, any drug equivalent to a skull and bones resembling or showing sign of poison. And that is mind over matter that you will eliminate it, hopefully. But you do need a support group. You need your AAs, your rehab, your treatments, my methods, thousands of others. You need people like Dr. Luis Gonzalez to help you, like myself to help you. These are all people that you need in your life to support you because mind over matter is your internal thoughts. But the support is to continuously support you. It's exactly, it's like two crutches. So you don't fall over, you use them. That is what a support unit is. A support unit is somebody to hold you up during those times that you might fall. And that is what those people that are out there that are doing this for a living, addiction recovery coaches, that is what the treatment centers, the rehab centers, and the AAs do. They support you. But please, when you look at the next uh, bottle of alcohol, when you look at that crack, and you look at that cocaine, you look at that marijuana, picture a skull and bones uh, red, uh, showing the sign of poison. And that's exactly what you're putting into your system. Every time you touch alcohol drugs, uh, you're putting poison. So you might as well just start going to your medicine cabinet, uh, or into your kitchen sink, uh, under the sink, and taking Drano, uh, ammonia, uh, uh, rubbing alcohol. You might as well just put all that into your system because that's what it's going to do. That's going to kill you as quick as alcohol and drugs will. Put it out of your mind. Wake up each and every day with a mission, with a passion to help other people. Wake up each and every day knowing today is going to be a new day in your life, a better day in your life. Wake up every morning thanking the Lord Jesus Christ for another day on this beautiful earth. Because there are so many people right now as I sit here in front of this camera that are going to close their eyes for the last time and going to take their last breath. Did they have a chance for change? As you sit there and you watch me, you have a chance for change. You have a chance for change. Don't let this chance go by because tomorrow is not guaranteed for any one of us. Folks, I hope to God that each and every one of you folks has a sober today because I promise it will make a better tomorrow. And if you start thinking positive, positive things will happen in your life. Remember that big changes will all come with very small steps. There is not one big step to give you a big change. You need to go to small steps. Every tunnel at the end has a little light. It might, might be as pinhole sized light as you walk towards that light in small steps. That light becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and eventually you'll reach the light and that is your big change. I hope to God each and every one of you folks in my audience, no matter where you are, has a great day. But I hope to God, more importantly, you have a sober day. May God bless you.